uh, brothers and sisters in the faith, the topic of our Kutpa today is the trust. Uh, in the Quran, in Arabic, we call it an aman. So during the course of this Kutpa today, when I mention an aman, an aman, I'm referring to the trust. أيها المسلمون جاء الرجل إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل الساعة فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا ضيعت الأمانة فانتظر ساعة قال وكيف إضاعتها قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أسدلت الأمور إلى غير أهلها فانتظر ساعة ولا من there is a man who came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is asking him uh, about the judgment day. Or in hadith, they always say a sa because nobody knows when it's going to happen. So, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, uh, told a man that the time in this life, when people lost the trust, people don't trust each other no more. Husband they trust the wife, wife don't trust the husband, children don't trust their parent, uh, you know, population they don't trust the leadership, and so on so far. The teachers they don't they trust the student, the student they don't trust the neighbors, they don't trust each other. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say when that occur, when that happen, so everybody should sit down and wait for the judgment day. So the man asked another question. Wakaifa idwa adwaha. How it will get lost? Can you please, Rasul, explain to us how it will get lost? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when people start to give responsibility to people to someone who is not qualified, he is not worthy to get it. The people who vote for somebody, they know very well that person is not even qualified for the position. And then they will take him to put there, and they know very well that that person is not qualified for the position, and also say we should wait for the judgment day. If the people appoint someone to be an imam of the community, and they know that man did not acquire any qualified education to serve that position out there. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we should look for the wait for the judgment. If the, 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 the leadership of the community, if they take it and give it to someone, and they know that person has no good reputation, that person is not qualified, he is not competent, to lead the community if that occurs, and also say we should wait for the judgment day. Now, what is the meaning of Al Amana? What is the real meaning of Al Amana? In the Sharan, in the Islamic theology, the Al Amana real meaning is Adawu Haqqullahi bi ibadati. وَإِخْلَاصُ عَدِيلِ لَهُ وَالْقِيَامِ بِخُوفَ الْقَلْقِ مِنْ غَيْرِ تَخْسِيرِ When we talk about Al-Amana, Al-Amana all the time, what we are trying to talk about? Al-Amana means you must worship Allah to the best of your ability. That's the first Amana. When you pray, you should pray on time. Before you pray, you make the good wudu. When you make a sujood, you should do it on time, you know, you should do it correctly. Don't rush with it. When you make a sujood, you should, you know, whatever you should want to say in the sujood, will ruku, you see, that is the al-amana. If you fasting, you fasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that order you to fast for him. So you should fast correctly. Don't fast 
because of the people are looking at you, but when you go out of the sight of the people, you go eat, you go to McDonald's, you go somewhere, you drive driving around, then you come back in the evening, say you're fasting, that you lost Al Aman, that means you lost Al Aman. When you're going to give the zakat, give to the needy people. Even if you have somebody who is your relative, who is need help, give that person zakat. Any need, need the people in the community, be a Muslim or non Muslim, give them the zakat. And so on, so far. When you go to Hajj, don't go to Hajj because you want to go stand with a and take a picture so the whole world will see you and say, Oh, that man went to Makkah, mashallah. Look at him over there, he's in Makkah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's haram, but you, that should not be your intention to show off. Your intention should be, I am going to Makkah so Allah expired my sin, whatever sin I've committed. Before the time I was born up to the present, so Allah has to forgive everything. That's my meal. So here. That is the first amal. The second one, ikhlas adil And that go to the second one too. And when you worship Allah, the ikhlas, you, are, you should be sincere when you perform in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last one, al qiyam bi hukuk al qalbi mi tafsir. That is the most difficult one. The people we interact with them on daily basis, be it to our job, be it even less than for our family, you and your husband, you and your wife, you should give their right to them without any shortcoming. These are the three foundations, three basics of Al Aman. When you're working with somebody, when you're working with an institution, don't say because there's something here, you clock in or something like that, you clock out, or you refuse to do the job, then when time comes, you can't, you clock out, you run, you go to your house, and then you expect the pay at the end of the week. So that is not Al Aman. That is not good. Our interaction with people on a daily basis, we should be very, very careful. Whatever we do, we should make sure we are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be sincere to the people we deal with them on a daily basis. Because all this is for us, is, is for in what is called an aman. That is why, brothers and sisters, in the faith, uh, the Islam gave significant, higher significant position to an aman. Islam attacked so many important to an aman. Even the salat we're doing. It was presented to the heaven and earth. They said, no, Allah, we can't able to do it. We can't stand it. We're not able to do it. But the human beings say, yeah, we can't able to do it. That's why we are doing it right now. So if we're doing it, we should do it with Aman. So the first point, why Allah attacked or Islam attacked very important to Al Amana. The first, first, first one is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La imana liman la amana tada. In the him of being, you can get shahada, you can be a Muslim, but so long you are not trustworthy. Our son sallallahu alayhi wa not me. He said in the authentic hadith, that me, if the people don't trust you, people you socialize with them, people you interact with them, everybody knows, oh, that man don't trust you. You gave me the money, you go back, you're not going to get that money no more. There is no trust. Nobody trusts you. You trust him with your family. It, it, it become a, a, a disaster. You trust him with anything, you know. If you agree, so oh, you know what? I'm sending you money to pay house for me back home before we are busy here in the diaspora. Before you go there, you can't even see no land, you can't see no house. A lot of people experience it here. So if anybody have that kind of character, no matter who you are, you should know that you don't have no iman. That's what Rasul said. La imana liman la amana that's the first one. That's why even our, our prophets, the messengers Allah has sent before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all of them, the first, the first statement that used to come from their mouth when they go to their people to go preach, the first thing they will say, "Inni Rasulullah, Inni Rasulun Amin, Inni Rasulun Amin, Inni Lakum Rasulun Amin." Allah has sent me. People, you don't know who I am, but uh, Allah has sent me to you as a messenger, but I am trustworthy. And all of us know the famous story when Sayyidina Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, 
when he was traveling from Egypt to Madian. And then he was going to Swipe. And then he met Swipe, two daughters. They are standing over there. They want to get the water. They cannot be able to get water because there are so many men over there. So nobody, their father is very old. He can't be able to go. He was another prophet at this time. So they was, they were, they were, they, you know, saying, Musa saw them. Why are you sitting down here? You can't go get the water. They said, no, we are only two, you know, of female. We don't have no strength. We're not able to go fight for water over there. So we wait until everybody finish before we get water. So Sayyidina Musa said, okay, I will help you. He went there, he shot. He went there, and then he finally he got the water. And then when these two girls went to their father, Sidna Shai, they told their father, they said, Daddy, we met a gentleman today. This man, you know, he, he is he's now he's very, very strong. You know, and not only strong, he's trustworthy. He's strong because he went, he got the water for them. The time they used the normally consume to get the water over the Sina Musa was very physically built and then he was strong, so he might be better. They said, not, we, have, we are asking him to hire him, not because he's strong, but he's trustworthy. They trust working right why? Because the two girls were walking in front of Sina Musa, Sina Musa said, No, you can't do that. Because we all know we the men. When the women passing, you know, shaking their butt in front of us, say Sina Musa said, Islamically, that is not good. So why you do your walk behind me? I will walk in front of you. So this this girl said, My dad, if you hire this man, you know, this man is good, he's strong, but he is trustworthy. If some people as soon as they give you small little favor, the second thing they ask for your telephone number. Then the second thing they say, Oh, can I go visit you? The third they say they want to sleep with you. That is not a man. Whatever we say today, may Allah guide out to the stripper. And Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he too had a similar incident. Sayyidina Nuh said, Kala Rabbi inni da'utu qawmi layla wa nahara. Because Sayyidina Nuh understood that the amana, the first, the concept of an amana, you have to deliver whatever job they give it to you. You should do it to the best of your ability. What Sayyidina Nuh said? Indeed, out you call me Layla Wanahar. He said that uh, I am here because Allah I did my best. And I call my people day and night. Don't say because uh, they asked me to work a morning shift, I just morning shift, then I said, No. I work in the morning, I morning shift, I do afternoon shift, I do overnight shift. Send that who did that. But can you imagine how many people can he get 50, I don't know, 50 people join him? That is a different story. But all those things that happen. And then it tells us, we the Muslim, that this is called an aman. When they ask you to do anything, the community trusts you. The pastor, the imam, they, they trust you. That's one of the things. You know, even if they trust you to teach the people that we, make sure you do it to the best of your ability. Or more. If they trust you, to somebody trusts you, oh, my brother, I'm traveling to, to Africa. Can you please keep out of my family? Be trustworthy. The same way 